What's up, I'm Ejem, and welcome back to my channel. So for the past couple weeks, I've been really focusing on making sure that the Evo Dictionary API is working as expected, all of its tests are passing, and it's able to consistently deploy to a cloud platform. And all of this is actually really nice. I'm glad that this API has been growing and maturing in a very maintainable, manageable way. But I knew at some point I had to go beyond just the world of like web development or backend and get a little bit comfortable with the whole idea of database infrastructures and database maintenance. So more specifically in the past couple weeks, I had to learn how to automatically back up the data that's inside of the MongoDB database that's remotely hosted. So in this video, I wanna walk you through the process that I had to set up in order to back up the MongoDB database daily. So through this whole process, I had to ask a lot of questions, but the first question that I definitely needed to answer was, where do I wanna back up my data? MongoDB offers two really nice commands, which are Mongo dump and Mongo restore, which allow you to specify a MongoDB instance, whether it's local or remotely hosted, download or dump all that data. And then Mongo restore allows you to re-upload all that downloaded BSON data. These commands are really great since they allow me to run them in environments that can be automated, like if I wanted to run a cron job. But I still needed to figure out where I wanted to save all my dumped MongoDB data. So after doing some quick research online, I actually came across this GitHub gist that walked through the process of uploading all of your MongoDB data to a Dropbox. So for this GitHub gist, it's called MongoDB Backup. And essentially the whole idea behind it is that you can dump all of your MongoDB data using MongoDump, and then you can upload it to a Dropbox application folder. So the author of this post details the process of using a custom Dropbox uploader script making sure that you have the permissions to run that script, setting it up, and then you want to run this entire script, which will essentially dump all of the data from your MongoDB database into your own personal application folder inside Dropbox. So I really like this gist, but after trying to work with it and incorporate it into the API code base, it turned out that it didn't work exactly how I needed it to work. I was getting a lot of errors, inconsistent upload times, all that kind of stuff. So I had to figure out a way how I can still dump all my MongoDB data and then upload it into a Dropbox application folder since I really liked that process. So after doing a lot of research and rewriting and reconfiguring this GitHub gist since I really like it as a starting point, I was able to come up with a final script that works well with the API code. So inside of the Evo API project, there's a new directory called scripts, which contains the sync sh script. So this script is responsible for running the mongo dump command in order to download all the data from our MongoDB database and then upload it to our Dropbox application folder. So at the top of the file, we first define that this is going to be a bash script, and then I define the current date, which is going to be used to prefix each of my MongoDB backups. After that, I specify my temporary directory, which is going to get generated when we're dumping all of our data. And then I specify the target directory, which is actually the directory inside of my Dropbox account where all of this data is going to go. So then I specify a variable that is going to have the name of the database where I want to take my data from. Dollar sign one specifies that once I call this bash script, the first argument that I pass into the script is going to be our DB URI. And then DB name is the name of my database inside of MongoDB. And then I specify my file name, which is going to be a compressed file of all of my dumped MongoDB data. So once I set up all these variables, I want to define my MongoDB dump function that's going to get called. So inside of this function, I call the mongo dump command, which takes in a URI, which points to our database URI, and then it's going to output all of the BSON data into our specified dir variable. Here, after that, I make sure to check to see if the mongo dump command was successful or not. And having this check is super necessary when I'm running it inside of GitHub Actions, so I know that my mongo dump function was successful or failed, so I can address it properly. So after I got all my BSON data, it's now living inside of our dir variable. So I want to compress my dir variable into the file that we specified. And once we're done compressing our dir variable into our file, we want to remove our temporary database. So we do a rimraf of our dir variable. So after we define MongoDB dump as a function, we call it. And once we're done calling this function, we should now have a compressed database file that contains all of our database information. So after that, we have to move on to step two, which is uploading this new compressed file up into our Dropbox account. 
So the second argument that's taken when we call the sync command is our token, which is used to upload to our Dropbox account. Then I just redefine our dir variable to be empty so that we're able to upload this BSON data or this now compressed file at the very top level of our Dropbox. And then I define the variable base name that takes in our file, and then I make a check to see if my file actually exists. If my file exists, then I'm gonna go through the process of uploading that file to my Dropbox account. Finally, once I'm done with uploading, I'm gonna get a response code, and hopefully I see that my response code is 200. If it's not 200, then I'm going to return back backup failed and exit out with the code one. But if everything went well, meaning that I got 200 HTTP code response, then I'm gonna say backup successful and exit out of the script with a zero code. So the whole idea behind the script is that I grab all my data from my MongoDB database, and then I compress all that information into a compressed file, and then I upload that compressed file into my Ebo API Dropbox account. So whenever I run this command, I should see a brand new Ebo API tar file inside of my Ebo API Dropbox account. So this is my Dropbox account, and you can see that I'm inside my apps folder that has the Ebo API folder that includes all of my compressed tar files. Each of these files are a snapshot of my MongoDB database at the time that this script was ran. And you can see here on October 19, 2020, and every day after that, I've been uploading a copy of my MongoDB database at 5.04 p.m. because I automated this process after I set up my sync.sh script. So now that we have this script that allows us to actually back up our database and upload it to our Dropbox account, we now need to figure out a way of how to automate it. So the best way to automate things whenever you're working inside of GitHub, in my personal experience working with this API, is to use GitHub Actions. So I had to set up a whole new GitHub Actions workflow that's responsible for running automatically every single day at a certain time and just run this script, which is going to back up our database. So if we go back into the Ebo API project and we go into the GitHub folder and then inside the workflows folder, you can see that there's a new backup.yaml file. So inside this YAML file, it's called backup production, which is going to back up the production data. And this workflow runs every single day at 12 a.m. UTC time. After doing some calculations to figure out what time it is in Pacific time, it's 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. So every day at 12 a.m. UTC time, I'm going to run my backup job. So the first thing that I do is I set up my environment to run on Ubuntu. And then after that, I check out all of my project files using this GitHub template. And then I specify my current shell, which is going to be running in bash. And I set up my environment and run my commands. So the way that GitHub Actions handles environment variables in a bash shell is that you first need to specify your environment key and then you have to specify each environment variable you want to use when you call your bash script. So here I specified my Mongo URI, which is going to be a secrets token inside of my GitHub repository. And then I also specify my Dropbox token, which is also a secrets token inside of my GitHub repository. So once I set up these environment variables, I first have to configure my environment to allow me to actually make HTTP requests successfully inside of GitHub Actions. So after I configure my environment, I make a new Evo API DB directory, which is going to be responsible for catching all the dumped data from MongoDB. And then I run my sync script, which takes in my Mongo URI and my Dropbox token. So my Mongo URI is my first argument and my Dropbox token is my second argument. If we head back over to the sync script, we can actually see that again, the first argument is the DB URI, which is the literal URL of our database. And then the second argument is our token, which is our Dropbox token that gets used as our auth token in order to make our post request. So the great thing about this workflow is that it runs automatically. When I pushed backup.yaml, all I had to do is just make sure that the scripts were running every day at 12 a.m. UTC time. We can take a closer look at this workflow inside of GitHub. So if we go to the API GitHub repo and go on to the Actions tab, we can see here that we have our backup production workflow. And then you can see that this backup production workflow has been running every single day for the most part, on average, for about 30 seconds. If we click into one of these workflows and see the logs that it produced, we can see that it sets up its job, it checks out all the files from our API, and then it configures our environment in order to make network requests. And then once we get all that data, we're gonna compress it and then upload it to our Dropbox account. 
If you go into the settings tab of any repo and then you go to the secrets tab, you can see that the secrets that exist inside of this repo, again, are our Dropbox tokens and our Mongo URI tokens. So a big heads up for any of this to work, you need your MongoDB database to be remotely hosted in like MongoDB Atlas. And then for your Dropbox account, you need to have a developer's account, which is free. All you have to do is just generate a new auth token and then use the auth token in order to make your network requests for uploading your MongoDB backup. I know this is probably not the best approach when it comes to backing up data, but I found that it worked best for this project at this moment in time, since using Dropbox is completely free and compressing our MongoDB data is super, super cheap and quick and easy to do. If you want to contribute to this project, the link is down in the description box below. You can look at the issues, try to start working on one of the issues or create a new issue if you find that a feature is buggy or doesn't exist. I'm also on Twitter where you can send me a DM and we can have a chat about this project or anything JavaScript related. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one.